May 2018 is that special time every 26 months when the orbits of Earth and Mars permit low energy journeys between the planets. Taking advantage of this, last week NASA launched a new mission to Mars, InSight, the first dedicated to studying the interior of the Red Planet. And alongside the launch of this exciting robotic mission, SpaceX have also been making rapid strides developing a new vehicle to send people to Mars in the 2020s. In today's Mars update, we'll be taking a look at the scientific goals of the InSight mission and how what it learns may help design more efficient human settlements on Mars. We'll then examine the progress that SpaceX are making on their BFR Mars vehicle as they move into the construction phase. It's truly an exciting time for Mars exploration, so let's dive right in. On May 5th, 2018, NASA's InSight mission launched towards Mars on an Atlas V rocket. InSight is a stationary lander that shares a similar structural design to the Phoenix mission, which landed on Mars 10 years ago. Over the next 200 days, InSight will traverse interplanetary space on its way to a rendezvous with Mars on November 26th. As it enters the Martian atmosphere, InSight will slow its descent using a heat shield, deploying parachutes, and finally firing rocket engines to make a safe touchdown. The target landing site is the flat plains of Elysium Planitia, around 600 kilometers north of Gale Crater, where the Curiosity rover is currently operating. During the course of one Martian year, InSight will be conducting detailed investigations to reveal the interior structure and composition of Mars, for which we only have indirect inferences so far. Indeed, almost everything we know about the insides of the terrestrial planets has come from profiling the deep interior of the Earth, primarily by measuring seismic waves as they travel through our own planet. But the Earth is a little bit of an odd case in our solar system, as active plate tectonics continually exchanges and recycles material in the crust and mantle, making it quite difficult to study the early history and evolution of the Earth. But Mars is different. We know from studying the orbits of satellites around Mars that it has a crust, a mantle, and a core, and so therefore went through similar formation processes to the other rocky planets in the solar system. But due to its smaller size, Mars appears to have undergone very little geological evolution of its own, meaning that its interior potentially holds the key to studying the original building blocks of rocky planets and how planets themselves form. As an exoplanet scientist myself, I'm incredibly excited by what this could tell us about planet formation and evolution in general, which is vital as we try to understand the potential for habitability on planets orbiting other stars. InSight will study the interior of Mars using three primary instruments. The first, a seismometer, will measure vibrations propagating through the planet caused by Mars quakes, meteorite impacts, landslides, and even the orbit of the Martian moon Phobos. As seismic waves propagate through a planet, they refract or change direction as they encounter materials with different densities, in the exact same way that light rays bend when passing from air into water. So by back tracing the path of such waves, this can reveal the thickness of the various different layers in Mars, as well as their density, and hence inform us as to what they're made of. You can also study the core itself, because certain types of seismic waves, transverse S waves, can't propagate through liquids like the outer core of the Earth. Now this is really important, as a liquid outer core is thought to play a key role in generating global magnetic fields. So by studying the physical state of Mars' core, perhaps we could finally explain why Mars doesn't have a significant magnetic field today, even though evidence suggests it did once have one in the past. And for people interested in one day terraforming Mars, the lessons learned from studying Mars' core and its magnetic field could potentially inspire some truly creative solutions 
to restore Mars's magnetic field a couple centuries down the line. Complementing the seismometer, a radio science experiment will use two antennas to reflect a radio signal sent from Earth to the lander. This radio signal will be Doppler shifted as Mars wobbles about its rotation axis, with the properties of these wobbling motions depending on the size, shape, and density of Mars's core. This experiment therefore enables an independent measurement of how liquid Mars's core is, without having to measure any seismic waves. Finally, a burrowing probe will drill down 5 meters to measure the heat flow beneath the Martian surface. Though the primary goal here is to assess the relative contributions of the residual heat from the formation of the planet versus other sources such as radioactive decay in the core, this instrument will also provide some important measurements for planning future human settlements. Because by measuring the heat flow, thermal conductivity and thermal diffusivity of the upper layers of the Martian regolith, the feasibility of constructing heat pumps can be assessed for the first time. A geothermal heat pump extracts heat from below the surface and transfers it into human habitation spaces. Essentially, a refrigerator running backwards. Now, driving the heat pump does require some electricity, likely from solar panels, but it's a much more efficient way to warm habitats on Mars than by the alternative, which would be using electrical resistance heaters. Combining these important thermal measurements with other properties of interest to future human settlers, such as the meteorite impact rate and potentially the distribution of underground aquifers, it's quite clear that the InSight mission can only serve to further advance plans for the first human missions to the Red Planet. But how will people one day journey to Mars? This is the very question that the private company SpaceX was founded to address. One of the things that really excites people about SpaceX is how fast they make progress. This year, we've already seen the maiden launch of their super heavy launch vehicle, the Falcon Heavy, with a second flight planned for October, three attempts at recovering rocket payload fairings, and just recently, the first launch of the final upgrade of their reusable Falcon 9 rocket, the Block 5. But all of these impressive achievements are but foreshadowing of what is to come. On April 16th, 2018, the Mayor of Los Angeles officially announced that SpaceX will be starting production development of their Mars vehicle, the BFR, at the port of Los Angeles. SpaceX have been granted a 10-year lease, extendable up to 30 years, to construct a state-of-the-art industrial manufacturing facility about 30 kilometers south of their headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Once they have cleared the final permitting process, SpaceX will tear down an old pumping station in order to build an 18,000 square meter facility at Berth 240 on Terminal Island. It is here that the Big Falcon rocket, BFR, and its upper stage, the Big Falcon spaceship, or BFS, will be manufactured before being loaded onto a transport and shipped by sea to the launch site in Texas. But though SpaceX is currently still waiting for planning permission to demolish the old buildings, there has been a great deal of activity at the site over the past month. Wasting no time at all, a large tent, 60 meters long, 30 meters wide, and 15 meters tall, has been erected to begin immediate research and development work on the BFR. This was seen most prominently in an image shared by SpaceX CEO Elon Musk from inside the tent, showing a 9 meter diameter tooling for the main body of the BFS. So you might be wondering what this tooling actually is and how SpaceX will be using it to make parts of their Mars spaceship. The tooling itself is not part of the spaceship per se, but rather it is a mould around which carbon fibre composite material can be forged. So how do you make carbon fibre composites? The basic principles, being shown on a smaller scale in this video by Interorbital Systems, goes as follows. Firstly, you take a carbon filament made from a polymer such as polyacrylonitrile, and wind it around a mould, in this case called a spinning mandrel. Over many iterations, 
carbon fibres are robotically woven around the mandrel to form a reinforced pattern, optimised to maximise the strength of the component. In this case, to serve as a propellant tank. But the carbon fibres alone is not what makes this material so resilient. To achieve this, a coating of adhesive surrounds the carbon fibres, with the entire ensemble then placed into an oven, which causes the adhesive to bind the carbon fibres together, forging a composite material with truly remarkable properties. Carbon fibre reinforced polymer, sometimes simply called carbon composite. This is the material that the BFR and BFS will be made from, stronger than steel and aluminium, whilst remaining five times lighter than steel and 50% lighter than aluminium. A rocket making heavy use of carbon composites can carry heavier payloads into orbit. The material's usage in aerospace is also quite common already in some commercial aircraft, with one example being the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, which is composed of 40% carbon composite to reduce its weight by 20% meaning the fabrication technology for carbon composites is already mature, and SpaceX has actually already demonstrated a degree of expertise in carbon composite manufacturing, as they built and tested a 12-metre BFS development tank in 2016, even larger than the current design of the BFS calls for. It's also interesting to note that a number of metal structures have recently been observed outside of the BFR development tent, which could potentially be moulds for forging other carbon composite components to make up the BFS. Once the spaceship body has been created, it will be removed from its mould and mated with other carbon composite parts, such as the delta wings and cone-shaped passenger area, to create the spaceship hull itself, the internal propellant tanks, other internal hardware, and finally, the Raptor engines will be added to complete the spaceship. And if all goes to plan, SpaceX are currently targeting an ambitious goal of having the first BFS test article undergo short hop tests, going up a few kilometres and coming back down at their new facility in Texas in the first half of 2019. This will kickstart a new test programme, that could potentially lead to the first uncrewed BFR Mars mission launching as early as 2022, and wouldn't that be remarkable? Because with SpaceX moving as fast as they are on the BFR, I'm genuinely hopeful that we will see, within the next 10 years, the first human footsteps on the Red Planet. That about wraps up the Mars news for now, but if you'd like to find out when the next Mars mission update is coming out, or to suggest topics for future videos, be sure to check out my channel's community page. I've just now put up a post there asking what you would like to see discussed in a live stream on this channel that I'll be hosting two weeks from now. I'm also pleased to say that based on all your feedback, I'm currently working on a new video on terraforming Mars, which will hopefully be coming out next month. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and please do let me know if you have any feedback or comments. And to make sure you don't miss future Mars mission updates, hit subscribe and then click the notification bell in order to catch all the latest news on our journey to the Red Planet.